Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate year-to-date and month-to-date sales in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Victor in Grand Island, Nebraska, one of my Platinum members. Victor asks, how can I calculate year-to-date and month-to-date sales for my company? I'd like to see a nice summary on my main menu screen when I log on to the database every day. While you're at it, an all-time sales figure would be nice too. Thanks. Well, Victor, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can either build queries and do an aggregate query, or you can use the DSUM function. I'm going to show you both of those methods. The DSUM function is better if you just want to put a, a total on a form somewhere. Knowing how to make the aggregate queries do it allows you to make different reports and stuff too. So I'm going to show you both methods. Now, before we get started, I got a bunch of prerequisites for you, and that's just necessary because I don't want to recover everything every video. So that's why we got these prerequisites. So if you don't know how to use query criteria, go watch that. If you've never made an aggregate query, go watch that one. I want you to watch my birthdays video because in that video, I teach you how to use a function called date serial, which we're going to need for today. DLOOKUP, which is important, and then DSUM, which we're going to use also. DLOOKUP is kind of like DSUM's little cousin which if you'd learned DLOOKUP first, that's easier. So go watch all five of these videos if you haven't already. They're all free. They're all on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. There's the links right there. You'll also find links down in the description below the video. Go click on those, watch those, and then come back here. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download it off my website if you want, or you can use your own database. That's fine. Now in this database, we build a customer form and each customer can have orders. And here's an order form with an invoice, all this good stuff. If you haven't watched this video, it's not a requirement. That's why I don't put it on the prerequisites. But if you wanna learn how I built this, I'll put a link to my invoicing database down below as well. Now, this invoice calculates the order total by adding up the detail items. But to keep things simpler for this class, I'm just gonna add an order total to the order table. Right, because normally we have our order invoice queue and our order detail queue that does all the adding up, right? But we're just going to keep it simple. So let's go in here and design the order table. And I'm just going to add an order total in here. Normally you can just use a query for this. That's fine. We're going to cheat just to keep the, the video for today easier. Okay. So here's some orders. And let's put a few more in here. The customer ID really doesn't matter. Let's add three more orders. And let's just change the dates up a little bit. This one's fine. We'll keep that in last year. Today's date, it's currently 2022. And it's February 25th. So let's add some. Let's put one in here from 130. Which, by the way, uh, earlier this week, I switched my system over to this new date system. The ISO date, where, it's go, where it goes year, month, day. I love it. A couple little minor problems that I posted videos about. But so far, it's so much easier to read and work with. Okay, let's make this next one 2 1, and then we'll go uh, 215, 221, and let's put one in the future. I'll go up to 3 5. N normally, in your order entry system, you wouldn't have future dates, but at least this lets us just check and make sure that our, our calculations are working. Okay, so if I do year to date, I should only get, well, let's make this one 2022. There we go. I should only get these guys in year to date, right? And then month to date, I should only get these ones because it's currently February. Okay, let's put some order totals in over here. Let's go 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, right? Okay. So our year to date total should be that, which is 5, 9, looks like 1400, right? And our month to date would be just these three. So that's what, 1200? 7, 12. Okay, so we should have 1,400, 1,200, and then we'll do an all-time sales tool. We'll just add everybody up. I'm going to ignore the is paid, but of course, you want to make sure that these are paid, all right, before you put them in your calculations. And that's just another criteria, which you know how to do, right? Okay. Now, this is one of those instances where you have to use two queries to do your calculations. Sometimes Access needs two queries. One query is going to apply the criteria and figure everything out. It's gonna gather up the records that we need, right? The year to date. Just give me all those orders from January 1st of this year up until now, right? Then we're gonna take that set of results and feed that into another query that's going to do the aggregate to add up all the order totals. You can't just do that in one query. 
This is one of the biggest stumbling blocks that I see people make with access as they try to do too much with one query. Don't break it up. Make, make it two, three, four queries if you have to. Yes, more advanced users, there's something called a subquery, but I covered that in my SQL seminars. It's a lot more advanced for the average everyday user. It's much, much easier to just break it up into multiple queries. So let's go to create. We'll do our year-to-date query first. Create query design. Okay, we're going to bring in our order table. All right, now I want to show a list of all the orders from this year, from January 1st of this year until right now. Okay, so I need the order date and I need the order total because we're going to add those up in the next query. The order ID and all the rest of the stuff doesn't matter. If you want to add is paid and say yes, put that here now. Okay, right here for the criteria is we're going to use the date serial function. Now, if you watch that birthday video, you know date serial lets you take a date, supply the three parts of the date, and it gives you a valid date value. So you can tell it the year, the month, and the day. So I'm going to zoom in. All right, this is going to be, we have to be greater than or equal to January 1st of this year. So we're going to be date serial. Now the first component is the year. So it's going to be the year of what year? The current year. Use the date function. See that? So that'll get replaced with 2022, the current year of the system date. Now next is the month. Now we want it from January 1st. So just put a one there and a one for the day. All right, so right there, that value is going to give you January 1st, 2022. That's currently 2022. Okay, if you're watching this in 2030, it'll be that year. And I know my videos have been, my videos have legs. I get people still watching my videos from like 2004. I'd say, yeah, it still works. Of course it does. Access hasn't changed much. All right, so it's got to be between that one and less than or equal to right now. And I use now because some people put date time. In their order date, I do. I want to know what time of day the order came in too. So the, the time is stored there. Okay, so just go less than right now. It'll be as of this moment. If you got future orders, uh, uh, be careful. Okay. And I don't like using the between keyword because sometimes between gets you in trouble. All right, so that's what I like to do it like this. Greater than and less than. Okay. And okay, there's my criteria. Let's run it real quick. Take a peek. And there we go. I should only have orders from the first of this year up until right now. So that one from 2021 doesn't show up there and the one from March, which is in the future, doesn't show up. Perfect. Let's save this as year two date one Q, YTD1Q. Okay, now just to show you, you can't aggregate this. There's the aggregator, right? You can't do that and change this to sum. And if you run it, it nope, because it's still grouping by that. And even if you turn this off to not show it, it's still being grouped. So you don't get a total here. Okay, yeah, you could desum this up if you want to, but eh, it's just easier to do this. Watch, let's put this back on here, turn off the aggregate. All right, save it again. Close that. Make our second query. Create, query design. All right, go to queries, bring in this guy, bring in the order total. We don't need the date now because the date's already figured out. It's in this query. We're Now we're just getting a set of records that meet the date criteria. Now I turn my totals on, change that to sum. All right, let's save this as my year two date two, two Q. And now when I run that, boom, I get the year to date. Sum of order total, there it is. See that, isn't that cute? And I show you this way too, because you can, you can use this with other reports and stuff. You can use this, you know, if you want to pull this into different, different stuff, you can. That's one method to do it, okay? Let's do a box on here to look up that value and display it there with a simple D lookup. Okay. So right click design view. I'm just going to copy this guy, copy, paste, slide it up. Right. We'll put in here year to date sales. Open this guy up, go to all. I'll change this to year to date sales. And the control source is going to be what? Let's shift F2, zoom in. Okay, we're going to just D look up the value out of that query. What's it giving us? Let's take a peek one more time. Oh, I'm oh never mind. Well, yeah, let's take a look at it because I forgot what it was. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. All right. It's sum of order total from year to date 2Q. Sum of order total. Okay, forgot. All right, control source ready. Here we go. 
equals D lookup sum of order total from here to date to Q. That's it. We don't need extra criteria because the only value in that query is the value that we need. All right. Hit OK. Uh, change the format to currency. Not a short date like the other box was. Save it. Close it. And open it back up again. Boom. There you go. Here's your unit sales. It just reads in that one value. Okay. So that's how you can do it with queries. Now let me show you how you can do it directly with D sum. So very similar. It's a little more complicated. Uh, let's copy this, paste it. I want. I like to show you the easy way first. Let's do month to date sales. Okay. Open this guy up and let's zoom in. Let's, let's change this first. Hold on. MTD sales. Zoom in. Get rid of you. Okay, this is going to be equal to D sum now. Now we're going to go right to the order table and add stuff up. Forget the aggregate and forget all that other stuff. Okay, what are we order, what are we adding up? We're going to add up order total. All right, what's our criteria? Where are we getting it from? Order T, sorry. Okay, now what's our criteria? It's going to be the order date is greater than or equal to. Now the date's going to go outside the string because we've got to calculate it. So we've got to put pound symbol there. Remember, dates have to go inside of pound symbols. All right, here's where we put our date serial. So it's going to be date serial. What's the year? It's the year of current date. Uh, yeah. Comma, what month? Well, we're doing month to date now. So it's got to be this month. It's currently February. So this has to be a two. How do you get that two? Use the month function. Month of date. Comma, and we want the first of the month, of course. So. Okay, there's our date serial. That'll be all replaced with, in this case, 2 1. Oh, excuse me, 2022, 2 1. <laughs> I see, I'm still, I'm still month day here. That's going to take me a while to get my brain completely rewired. All right, let's ampersand. Let's close up that date. All right, so that's the beginning of it. And order date has to be less than or equal to now. Yes, you can put functions like now and stuff like that inside the string. That's fine. Or if you want to, you could put a pound there and put it now outside of it. But, but this works just fine. Okay. Uh, if you want to include paid, you can also put on here and, you know, order paid or what is it? Is paid? I forget what we call it. You can put is paid equals true in here if you want to include that. I'm going to leave it off for now. Okay, but obviously you want to check for that. All right. Close it up. There it is. There's your, there's your grand formula, right? That's one step. You can do it all in one step with the dsum function. Okay, save it, close it, open it back up again, and boom, there's your month to date sales. Look at that. Now that you know that, a grand total for all time sales, I like to see all time sales too, it's kind of neat. Um, it's super easy now that you know how to do this one, just copy that. Let's put uh, all time. All right, come in here and literally just chop off the criteria. <laughs> Boop, that's it. Just add up order total from order T. If you want to put the is paid in here, here's where you put it, right? Is paid equals true. Equals true. True. Okay, but again, I'm going to leave it off just for the purpose of the class. You get it. That's where you put any other criteria you got. All right. Save that. Close it. And open it. And there you go. These are all time sales. Okay. So that is how you do a little dashboard right here, right? Put whatever calculations you want in there, month to date, year to date. You can you could change this label if you want to put the word February in there or whatever. I do that in my database. Okay. Have fun with it. Have some have a have a good time. Enjoy doing this stuff. I like this stuff. If you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, I'm gonna show you something that's not quite related to what we just did, but it's really, really cool. And basically, this year to date stuff. I recently went to check my own personal database for my business uh, because I've got some year-to-date calculations in there as well. And since I just recently switched over to this new date format, a lot of them didn't work. Now I've got dozens, if not hundreds of different queries in my database, and I didn't want to have to go through them all by hand. So what I did was I wrote a little VBA code to search through all of the queries in my database programmatically to find any query that had the word format in it using the old format function. So I could then switch it over to the new 
date serial format. And so that's what the extended cut covers, folks. It's VBA to loop through all the different queries in the database to perform a query search from the SQL property inside each query. It's really pretty cool. It's in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And we're up to like 200 and I think 50 or so of them. That's a lot of them. So you get access to all of them when you join. Uh, gold members can download these databases and get access to my code vault and so much more. Um, how do you join? Well, I'm going to tell you how in just a minute. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.